Hi everybody, it's Kara, and I thought I would do a quick tutorial on how to make these little bead dangles and try out my new tripod all at the same time. So I have made quite a few charm bracelets. I really like them. They're a lot of fun. And I've done quite a few videos on them. And every so often I get questions on different things with those, but mainly how I put together the little bead dangles, which are these little things here that you see. And I thought it would just be you know, a quick and easy tutorial to share with you guys and hopefully clear up any questions that you might have or maybe encourage some of you to give it a try to make a charm bracelet because um, I personally really like them. They don't typically take a lot of time and then you have this gorgeous creation when you're done. So basic supplies for a bead dangle would of course be beads. You might want um, spacer beads, you might want bead caps, things like that. I tend to prefer glass beads myself, even though they can be a little bit more difficult to work with because if you're not careful, you can scratch them or chip them. I like the weight of a glass bead. I like the look of a glass bead. And although I do have some acrylics, if I am really paying attention, I pretty much mostly buy glass anymore. That does tend to make them sometimes a little bit more expensive. Um, but I just think they're a prettier bead. And that's just your own preference, okay? In addition to all of that, you need this little pin that you can see these beads on. This is a head pin. It looks basically like a small nail. It has a flat end to it. And you can use that for these little bead dangles or you could also use what's called an eye pin. And the only difference is instead of having this flat end, it'll have a little circle end to it where you could add a little charm or something else to dangle down, okay? In addition to that, you need two tools. You need something to cut the little head pin down because you're not going to need this much of it. And then you also need round nose pliers to create the little loop at the top that you could then attach to chain or to um, a jump ring and then attach the jump ring to the chain. Just kind of depends on how you like to do it. Now, most people beat themselves up trying to get the little circle at the top to be perfectly round. Okay, I've done it. You're probably going to see me do it here when I try and actually do this on camera. But as you can see, mine end up being mostly pretty oval. They're pretty uniform. I don't know what it is exactly that I'm doing. I've practiced and I've actually taken a class. And I finally just decided that I wasn't going to worry about it as long as it's kind of a nice sy symmetrical shape. It still hangs on the bracelet just fine. It still looks neat. It's still uniform like the other ones. So I'm just not gonna worry about that kind of stuff. And I would su suggest to you that you guys don't waste your time doing that either. Just have fun and enjoy the process. So you have to take part of the length of this head pin off because obviously you're not gonna need a loop that big. And you just kind of have to eyeball it and decide how big do you want your loop at the top here to be. The smaller, you know, the more you take off, the smaller part you have to work with, the smaller your little oval or circle is going to be. So keep that in mind. I usually do mine, let's see, let me look. I usually do mine slightly more than a quarter of an inch. And as soon as I cut this off, I will measure it to be a little bit more exact. Mine ends up being yeah, probably like, I guess, three-eighths of an inch is what I would call it. So that's what I have left. The first thing you want to do is you want to take the tip of your pliers and you want to bend it. And you could use your flat, ed flat um, edge pliers, too, if you want to for this part. And basically bend it at an angle that is a right angle as much as you can get it to be, and of course it's not cooperating, to the beads themselves. You see that? Okay. And then you're going to take your round nose pliers and you're going to put the very tip of that between your two parts of the pliers. And basically you should barely be able to feel that when you run your finger over it. You know, that little part that sticks out, you shouldn't be able to feel that too much between the pliers, okay? 
and then you're going to basically um, you can either move the bead, depends on how you were taught or how you decided to do it. You can either move the pliers like this, or you can move the bead dangle itself like that with your thumb, and you're putting it around the pliers creating the circle, or the oval in my case. And then usually I have to kind of play with it a little bit because I'm not um, an expert at this, so I kind of monkey around with the wire just a little bit, bend it down. That may be why I get so much of an oval, but again, I don't really care. To me, once it's on the chain, you're not going to notice whether or not the top of the bead dangle is an oval or is a circle. Okay. So you just want to basically make sure that you close it so that you have a little loop at the top like that. Okay. And then of course you would add either a jump ring to this to attach it to the bracelet or if I'm just attaching it straight from this loop right here then I would be putting it on the chain right now when I did it instead of just um, closing it off like that. So let me show you one more time. Um, and depending on your head pin you could also bend it but again, if you're using glass beads, be careful. You can do it like this, where I bent it in advance. It was easier to bend that way. Cut off the amount you don't want. And okay. Then take your round nose pliers, like I did before. Grab it at the little tip of the head pin and turn it and then like I said I usually have to play with it a little bit more and you end up getting it to be out like that okay one thing I do do on my pliers and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not if you want all of your um, loops at the top here of the bead dangles to be about the same size then on your round nose pliers you probably can't see where mine's at so I'll make it a little bit darker on your round nose pliers take a permanent marker and draw a little line like so you can do it on both if you want but one side's good enough for me and then that way if you always place your head pin in the same spot when you're turning it your circle your loop at the little top will always be about the same size. Okay? So that way you can keep the amount that you cut off pretty uniform. If you look at the little pieces that I have left, there's not much difference in the length. And the tops of my bead dangles, the little ovals, are all about the same size because I tend to place it in the same spot on my round nose pliers. So Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you and hopefully it cleared up any questions you might have about bead dangles. If you have any more, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. Um, I hope you guys give it a try. I really, really love making um, charm bracelets and charms for um, not only my projects but to swap with people and I really like the idea of um, you know, making bead dangles is a little gift for a crafty friend. I think that would be something that's pretty simple to do, but you know, a nice little touch. So thanks for watching guys. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. Bye.